now. Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, November 22nd, 2011 Audit Committee meeting. We'll call the meeting to order. Uh, we'll start off with a uh, review and approve minutes from the meeting dated to September 27th, 2011. Anybody have any questions or make a motion? Move to approve Antiman. Second Aguilar. We have a motion made and seconded uh, to approve the minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Thank you. All right, we'll start off right away with our review uh, audit report, 1111 School-Based Health Clinic. Rich? Sure. This um, audit was done by Jeff Weber, who is uh, recently retired. However, uh, this will be his last, uh, it was his last audit project. We have a representative from, uh, from the health department here in case we have any questions about this. Um, uh, this was actually a request of management, um, so we put it on our plan for 2011. And... Um, the, uh, the focus of the audit was the, uh, the school-based health clinic at Terry Redland. And uh, there, there's two of them that are operated by the city health department. There's one at Hawthorne Elementary and there's one at Terry Redland. The reason we didn't do the Hawthorne uh, school is because they don't take payments there. It's just for children. The one at Terry Redland accepts payments and they also um, uh, see patients that are not school children. Um, as far as the results, um, Internal controls were good there. We didn't have any issues related to the cash handling. Um, we just had two audit findings there. Um, as you can see on page three, it's a very short report. We found the, the uh, contracts for the certified nurse practitioners uh, were being executed um, about two months after the work had already begun. So we had recommended that they, um, uh, that they complete the contracts before the work was started. And you can see the health department response here at the bottom of page three. They agreed to that um, with, the, with the next cycle on the, on the contracts. Um, the second audit finding related also to the, uh, the contract with the certified nurse practitioners. The city has an agreement with uh, South Dakota State University. That's who we pay for the services of the certified nurse practitioners. Uh, we found um, there was no record being kept of the actual hours and, and days that were being worked by the, uh, the CNPs. Um, so there's nothing to compare um, when the invoice would come for payment to see if that invoice would be correct or not. So we recommend it that they maintain a detailed record of the days and hours worked by all the contract workers so that they, there would be something to check when the invoice came uh, from South Dakota State to see if that was an accurate invoice. And you can see the response. Um, um, health Department agreed with that recommendation. So um, if there's... Any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer. And we also have uh, Jill Franken from Health Department here as well. So, Jill Franken, Health Director, if I might. One, a uh, couple of clarifications. At Hawthorne Elementary, um, and it may, I think it's um, identified in the, in the written report, we, um, at Hawthorne, we receive payments, just not cash payments from patients at the time of service. So we do receive Medicare or Medicaid and other um, sliding fee payments through um, our normal payment processes, just not at the time of service. Um, but then at Terry Redland, because of um, how we're able to operate there, we do receive, um, if they are required to pay a $15 copay, we do receive that at, at Terry Redland. And then the other um, item that I just wanted to uh, clarify regarding the nurse practitioner schedule is we, we do identify in their contract their schedule, and then we also put that schedule into our scheduling process. I think what Rich is referring to and what's in the audit findings is then making sure that the actual hours worked compared to the schedule uh, compared to the schedule when we're then um, receiving an invoice for those services so it, it is something that we recognize as well that we have done it in the past just not on a regular basis but we've done spot check um, auditing of that um, as a matter of fact it wasn't that long ago that we did do that just to make sure that everything is um, comparing so we have the schedule that we have in contract then we have how we schedule it in our scheduling system and then we have then their invoicing. It's just on a regular basis, making sure that those actual hours do compare. So, Councilor Rolfing. Then in the future, are you going to start doing it on a regular basis? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Any other questions for Jill or Rich? Jill, you requested the audit, uh, right? Yes. Um, did yes. you get everything you needed out of it? I guess. 
that's part of what we want to make sure you yes, get. Yes, absolutely, and I certainly could let Amy speak um, to that as well, but it is what we had hoped for. Uh, we got everything that we were looking for out of the audit. It's similar to other cash handling. We, we receive, yeah. as you know, a lot of revenue in our department, and we have to manage many multiple entries of revenue um, and, and uh, payments. And so, yes, doing this was just uh, kind of that last piece on our um, receiving uh, revenue that we wanted to make sure we had completely in line with the rest of our policies and procedures. So it's always good to have a, another set of eyes looking at that internally. So, yep. Well, sounds like you're doing a good job so far. So anybody else, anything else? Okay. Councilor Entman. Greg, I'd like to move that we accept this presentation and move it on to the council. Second, Rolfing. Very good. We have a motion to accept the audit report and a second by Councilor Rolfing. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Very good. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to our next report, uh, the school, I'm sorry, the uh, fuel report. And I'll let uh, Tim handle this one. Okay, Tim. All right, uh, with the fuel audit, we are looking at the fuel operations uh, that are conducted by the fleet <coughs> division. Um, and if you look at page nine under the appendix one section where it talks about the scope of the audit, um, we looked at the period of January 2011 through October 2011, uh, so just uh, basically a 10-month period there. Um, and we did not look at the operations uh, of fuel for the fire department in Sioux Area Metro. Uh, those two um, departments do their own fuel management, uh, so that'll, we'll look at that uh, down the road at a later time. Uh, jumping into the results of the audit on page 5, uh, we came. We had actually three findings. Um, the first finding was in regards to doing inventory reconciliations um, on a frequent monthly basis. They are being done. Uh, there are uh, reconciliations that are happening. However, when there's uh, found to be an overage or shortage in the uh, supply of fuel or the inventory, um, there has been no. Uh, there hasn't been a, a change in that inventory amount or an adjustment to it on a free on a monthly basis like the reconciliation um, it's it's kind of sporadic when they do it uh, basically talking to finance they just try to do it when they have time um, is is kind of the way it happens so we encourage them to do that on a more regular basis uh, because that can be reflected in the results of the financial statements if that's not being done on, an, on a frequent basis there. The second finding was in, in regards to the uh, fuel cards that are used. Those are the, that is the control system over the uh, pumping of fuel. If you don't have a fuel card, you can't get fuel from the city's fuel system but you have to have the two cards basically to do it. You have a, each vehicle has a card that's assigned to it, as well as any employee that uh, needs to get fuel from the city system, they also have a, a fuel card. Um, the cards are, they're pretty uh, generic. They're a blue card and a white card. Um, and you, you gotta have one of each to get fuel. Uh, but what we found and, and seemed to be, um, kind of a, a messy database system at the at the time that we looked at it. Um, there was a lot of cards in the system and a lot of cards that either were not uh, needing to be active anymore, um, had some sort of an issue. Um, as you can see from the numbers that we put into the bottom part of page five, uh, we kind of broke it down. Um, there was 57 full-time employees that have no are no longer with the city that still had active fuel cards, um, but I, I do want to go back and, and stress it again. These 57 people, unless they have a vehicle card, that employee card doesn't do them a whole lot of good. Um, and and Fleet did a very good job of stressing that to me, so I want to stress that to the public as well. Um, so by no means do we feel like. Uh, the fuel supply is at risk of, of theft in that manner, um, but it was a concern that there, it just, you know, was a, a messy uh, database at the time that we looked at it. Uh, but since then, um, from talking to the fleet management and fleet staff, they have uh, done a good job of cleaning that up. 
Then on to, um, we'll go on to the third and, and final of the, of the uh, findings, and that was in regards to a state law change from back in 2010, SDCL 5-18C-6, talked about that the fuel bid process um, should be in the minutes of the governing body and also the uh, documents retained on file uh, by the governing body, which if you look at state law, they define the governing body as your city council in our case. Um, and so we encouraged uh, management to get that, um, get those documents to the city clerk's office so that could be included in the minutes of the governing body, uh, which is you guys, the city council. Um, so they have agreed to that one if you went to the last uh, two pages of the report, uh, 10 and uh, page 10 and 11, um, they agreed to that and, and we're gonna start doing that on a regular basis. Um, the opportunities for improvement section, uh, these are, are items that we didn't feel were um, as severe, or I shouldn't say severe, um, as big of factors in the operations uh, that they're just things that we felt could improve the overall management of the fuel operations process. The first one was in, gar in regards to including security cameras and, and, and additional fencing. Right now the landfill site, the newest site in the system does have security cameras and they do have a, a partial fence enclosure at that site. Um, it just adds another level of security uh, to both employees as well as to the fuel supply and fuel site itself. Um, and that one, you can see management's uh, response to that as well. Uh, they partially agreed with that one. Um, on the second opportunity for improvement, this is in regards to the fuel cards and, and getting a way to uh, better manage that system is, where, is why we made this recommendation. However, um, if you skip down to opportunity for improvement number four, uh, which management has agreed to, um, they're gonna try to use basically your city employee badge, uh, put a chip into that and make that work uh, in place of this the employee fuel card, um, which will do away with opportunity for improvement number two. It won't be necessary if that can happen. Um, now going back up to the third one, um, this was in regards to getting information to the departments that buy fuel from fleet. Right now they're, they're not getting a standard report on what their fuel usage is and who's using the fuel. Um, we thought that would be a great way for the departments to be better infused into the process and that the departments could take a look at it if they so wished and see what their employees were pumping for fuel and how much it was. And you know if they felt there was some inconsistency, they could notify fleet and, and uh, get that all figured out. So those are the uh, results of the audit. Um, if you have any questions, I am here to answer those. Any questions for Tim? Uh, Councilor Rolfing. Yeah, a couple. Um, did you figure on uh, improvements number one on the cameras and uh, and security and fencing, uh, did you give any guesstimate as to cost on that? What the cost would be for those what uh, five different locations? Yeah, we we looked at what happened out at the landfill site when that was built. I believe it was built in the 2010 2009 2010 timeline, um, <coughs> and I want to say without being able to quickly page right to it, I think it was roughly. For the partial fence and the security cameras was right in that thirty thousand dollar timeline management is in the audience and they're welcome to correct me if i am wrong on that and give a better idea galen huber street fleet manager um, what we have coming up in 2012 is designed in 2013 is a to redo the fuel boy system together all together and in that process, what we certainly can do is take a look at the security cameras and make that part of our 
uh, process when we go through to do des the design work. What we're going to do in 12 with the design is there's for this is now that we this fueling system su uh, supplies fuel for school district, county, and the city. And when I'm addressing this, this is the city that we're going to be doing this project for. The the city vehicles will have a chip in. Right now, there's a blue card, and you have to swipe that card, and then you have to enter miles or hours, depending on what that piece of equipment is, and there's room for error on that. With the chip being inside the vehicle, when you drive up to the pumps, um, what the pump will do is uh, the software will activate the chip. It will read miles and hours and what that uh, vehicle number is. So there's no input by human, so it's, it's, there isn't any error there. And then secondly, we will be using our city ID badge, which everybody has to have, and have a proximity reader that we can just set that up to, and then that will read who it is that's fueling that piece of equipment. So basically what Fleet is going to do is get out of the card-making business. We don't want to be in it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to stay up with. And I can tell you right now that with the red recommendation number one, uh, Jeff Flayton, who's sitting in the back here, he's a supervisor for Fleet, has cleaned up and deactivated all the cards out there that, that the audit team has found out there. So that it was good that this was done because we certainly needed it to clean up, and, and that, was, that process has been completed as of today. Okay. Go ahead, Councilor. Um, so I, what I heard was that a couple of things. Number one, we're, we're buying the gas and everything with the county and the, and the school system. We, we, and, or are we proposing to do that? We purchase right now, and they have the ability to pump from our, our fueling stations. We have four fueling sites. One is at their operational center on Western, right across from where Howard Wood is. There's a fueling station down by the street department on 1000 East Chambers. There's a fueling station out at the park maintenance out on uh, 49th, and then there's a fueling station that was the most recent one that we built was out uh, by the landfill because they go through a tremendous amount of diesel fuel out there. It's just easier for them to have a place to fuel right out there. And, okay. and so those are the four stations. A county, a, a school district, or a city employee can fuel at any one of those four using their two cards that we have right now. Okay. But you... You, you didn't answer the question about what the cost might be, or don't you have any idea? I don't have a cost for I what the, the cameras. I have the cost, actually. I can okay. give you the dollar amount. The winning bid uh, for the surveillance cameras was uh, 16856 That was for the landfill site. And now, you know, basically with all the capabilities there, I, I'm not exactly sure that that would be what the other sites would be for a cost. But that's, that's a rough figure for what it was out at that site. And again, this was from, uh, I believe, 2009 or 2010, December of 2010. Yeah. Um, and then the, for the partial fence, which is, um, I'm not exactly sure how long that would be of a length, uh, but for the landfill site. But basically, the cost for that was um, 35,778 was the winning bid on that. That's a lot of fence. And it doesn't even completely enclose. It's just along the one side. Along, as you drive into the landfill site, it's on the east side of, well, west side of the, the uh, drive to get into the landfill and east side of the fuel site. So, which I don't know if that was just that fence or, or if it was another section We're talking of about at the landfill. I'm two pumps, exactly diesel sure. and regular, diesel and unleaded. Uh, out at the landfill? Yeah. Yeah, they have, uh, there's two, uh, there's a, a system for pumping diesel and a system for pumping unleaded right there. But since it's out in the rural area and we don't have employees out there that use that very much, we thought it was in our interest to prevent anybody from trying to tamper with that um, oh, area. Yeah. So we decided to put that fence and security cameras up. The fueling stations that are within Sioux Falls, 49th Street, um, out on Western, and the one at Chambers, almost at any given time during the day or night, there is a police officer that's at least going through and, and fueling up. So um, we also thought about the logistics of getting tankers in and out of these areas to fuel and getting making them accessible for people 24 hours a day, seven days a week to get in through these, this fencing. That would certainly take a little bit. There's a logistics question that we have about that, and that's why we thought the cameras were something we could certainly take a look at and put into CIP um, and take a look at further down the road, maybe with fencing if that's a requirement. As of today, I believe we've had no, no situation that we know of where somebody has tried to tamper or get fuel from any one of our four fueling stations. Any other questions for Galen or 
asked him. If I could, then, if uh, Galen, the uh, the cameras you're okay with the fences, though, as I'm understanding, are probably more of a problem than they might be worth. Yeah, um, certainly uh, the areas where they're located at 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 our shop down on Chambers, and at the park location, and again at the school district. Um, there's parking nearby at the school district to fence that off and allow a tanker to get in at all these locations. It makes it really tough and cumbersome to try and get a fence in there to protect that for fueling trucks to get in, personnel to get in the fuel, and then how, and to make it accessible for 24 hours a day. How do you get in? Do you want to get out and unlock a key, uh, uh, lock every time and then lock it back up, or do you make them automatic? Uh, It'd be something we'd have, certainly have to think about and probably cost a lot more than the cameras. Right. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Dean Borkart with Public Works. Just wanted to add one other thing. Obviously, with our three sites in town, one of the main uh, users of those sites in the overnight hours is our local police department. They fuel 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, you know, if you drive by many of these sites, you'll see that these uh, you know, police cars are, are being filled. So that is another level of security that we currently have above and beyond what, uh, uh, you know, that, that fence or that camera. But I do, we do agree that the cameras have, have a potential of being able to supply us as long as they would be able to store that data. My biggest concern or our biggest concern in, in every one of those developments, uh, uh, park shops right in the middle of their parking area for theirs as well as access in and out of their shop area. Uh, you know, the, the school district, we are, our fueling site is directly on their central services property. If we were to do that out, that's where their food trucks are going in and out. It, it, there, there are some correlations with the fence that we would have a concern with, uh, especially we would want to work with other departments. If it would be a requirement, we could make it happen, obviously. But uh, we would prefer to start, uh, being that it hasn't been a major issue, uh, you know, if there is surveillance there and that's publicized, I think that's a lot of, uh, you know, protection in and of itself, above and beyond what we, are, what we currently have uh, with the usage 24 hours a day. Thank you. I I think the uh, the findings show that the real threat is probably with the uh, fueling cards and yeah. and and I think that fences would be over and above probably what I can sense needed, but a good idea to at least consider. And it sounds like a, a problem in some of those cases. Uh, and, and to answer the fueling card question, uh, we have done what the audit has requested. Right. Uh, we we have already met with the HR staff. Uh, previously, they had not dealt with uh, you know. Our full our, our full time employees they get obviously all the information and we were we were added to that list so every full time employee that uh, changes departments uh, uh, is is terminated or retired all that information is now going directly to fleet uh, it doesn't we we had an exit policy that was filled out by a supervisor or should have been filled out by a supervisor where the card was supposed to be attached to but there was no checks and balances there was no uh, we fleet wasn't let know every time when a person was let uh, left employment with the city but now we have set up where whether it's a full-time employee or a part-time employee the HR staff will inform fleet directly uh, that this employee uh, has left service the termination date uh, if it's in the future if it's a future so at that point we can have control make sure those cards are terminated at the point they leave the city Right, I agree. There's lots of good cleanup that occurred here with this, Tim. Yep. Uh, a lot of good work. After all this, do you still sense any holes that you see, Tim, that need to get fixed or that the council should address? Or are you comfortable with all the management uh, recommendations? No, I, I, I think the management was very responsive <laughs> to our results of the audit. Too. And I don't, I don't know that council needs to take any action to, uh, in regards to it. I thought it was very good. Councilor Aguilar. Um, I'd like to make a motion to accept this audit report and recommend it for presentation to the City Council. Very good. We have a motion and seconded, and seconded by Councilor Entman to accept the uh, audit report. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Thank you. Just a reminder, if I could get everybody to sign in up uh, front uh, so the clerks know who is here. So please remember to sign in. There's a sheet up on the table, and that keeps me out of trouble. Very good. We'll move on to our uh, next audit report, uh, the neighborhood redevelopment. Rich? Yes. I, I'd just like to point out also at the committee that these three audit reports were all, um, I believe they were all requests that, that we put in our 2011 plan. Um, and we'll be talking about our 2012 plan here in a moment. But um, 
The uh, neighborhood redevelopment is kind of a generic term for, for what the city has been doing uh, to um, kind of correct and help uh, blighted neighborhoods from getting worse and help them get better. Um, this audit specifically focused on one neighborhood, uh, Pettigrew, although there have been uh, obviously efforts in other neighborhoods such as Whittier that's, that's, um, that have been successful. Um, we didn't have any audit recommendations on this audit, but I'd like to point out that um, if you look at our kind of our summary on page two there, um, this, this effort in, in uh, Pettigrew Heights has been going on for about five years now. It, it started in 2006 with Mayor Munson's uh, uh, efforts to, to focus on that neighborhood. And the, uh, the actual plan, a specific plan, was adopted about two years ago. It was in December of 2009 that the City Council adopted the redevelopment plan. And I think the, the main point is to be patient with this. This is going to take time. Whittier took time, and, and I think the results have been good. Um, you know, they're, they're much farther along than the, the Pettigrew Heights Association or uh, neighborhood is. Um, the, as far as the outcomes, um, you know, the uh, outcomes are obviously improve the quality of life, um, uh, decrease crime, decrease code violation, complaints, um, et cetera. Um, we're making progress there, but obviously some of these goals are going to take many years to, to, uh, to achieve. And um, management pointed out that, you know, this, uh, there isn't a specific stop point for this redevelopment plan for Pettigrew Heights. You can figure out a, a specific start. You know, you can point to that December of 2009, the plan that was adopted by the city council. But it's 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 an ongoing effort, and it's not just the city. There's uh, many nonprofit organizations involved in that in that um, neighborhood, and there's a lot of faith-based organizations. And I, I tried to highlight those in the in the report. Uh, so it's not just the the city doing this. And also, as far as a conclusion on page two, it's it's. Um, uh, the idea would be where the neighborhood, the residents, would, would take more of a leadership role at some point and, and, and that the city would be more of a resource provider. Uh, when the process matures, I, I think uh, that would uh, uh, result in, in, um, in the desired outcomes being achieved. Um, right now, the Pettigrew Heights Association is still kind of in, in the baby steps. They, they just formed this year, and they're, they're still uh, kind, of, kind of developing. The Whittier neighborhood is much farther along in that respect. Um, and, but, there, but there's hope. I mean, we can point to a specific neighborhood, Whittier, and, and the neighbors have taken leadership there and, and um, have taken responsibility for their neighborhood, and, and uh, they've had some good results. Um, we have representatives here from community development, if, if you'd like to ask them any questions or if they would like to speak. Uh, but we have no audit recommendations at this point, so. Right, Rich, if you could just Tell us again why we did this. Uh... This was a request from, I believe, one of the council members. And um, I know um, specifically um, there was a lot of discussion back in 2008 on that 11th and Duluth uh, project uh, that uh, the city purchased 11 properties there in 2008. And then we, uh, we knocked down the buildings. And we put an RFP out there for redevelopment. And we had that, that one offer from uh, from St. Joseph, and that project is right now it's under construction, should be completed next year. And that was, there was a lot of uh, interest at that point is, okay, what are we purchasing? How much, is, how much did we pay for it? And, and those sort of questions were coming up, um, you know, and we we're trying to attempt to answer, well, where did the money come to pay for this? Um, and uh, what are we doing with this property? Who, who were the sellers? How many offers did we receive? So we tried to clarify that in the report, but that um, it probably goes back to 2008. And um, but um, we, we didn't have any evidence that of uh, of uh, that uh, the funds were not being used appropriately or not that our funds were not being recorded properly when we looked at the uh, uh, the accounting for that and, and where the money was coming in and where it was going. We didn't have any issues with that. So. Right, very good. Uh, is there anybody from the neighborhood development that would like to address the audit committee for anything, any reason, any comments? Okay, very good. I think the intent really was just a, uh, you know, when this initiative was started in 2006, it's really a good chronicle. Uh, yeah, we tried to summarize kind of the, the, the highlights going back to 2006. And, uh, and, I, and I hope that we've covered in the audit committee covered everything that has been done there's quite an effort 
and the approach by the city to, to help in that area. Um, Mr. Cooper's been a part of that. I know there's a lot of us who have, but uh, I think the intent really was to just follow through to make sure that those programs were getting executed as they yeah. should and were planned. And, and, and right now, uh, the uh, I met with Kevin Smith here last month, and, and the, there was a what you might call a code enforcement blitz at the request of the neighborhood um, back in August, September. And now the follow-up is going on this month where they have uh, they did a survey of the, of the neighborhood. They divided it into four quadrants, and it was a multi-departmental effort to identify code violations and then uh, notify the property owners to clean up their property and had generally good compliance with that. And the word got out quickly once the survey started that the, the first quadrant had more violations than the the fourth quadrant because the word got out that the city was serious about this and uh, we are following up on that so all right very good any other questions or comments on this any motions move to accept the report and recommend a presentation of the city council Antimony. second Aguilar very good we have a motion and a second uh, to accept the audit report uh, all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed very good, thank you. Uh, next, if I could introduce Dean Buchtenberg. Uh, if he's going to be doing the audit for the city. And Dean asked if he could come and uh, say a few words. Dean? Well, good afternoon. Um, here on behalf of Ide Bailey, um, getting ready to, to do the external audit for the city. And uh, so just want to open up the communication process with, this, with regard to this. This body hires the external audit firm, the auditors report to this body. So as we get ready, um, as, as we start this project, there's a lot of planning that goes into it. We try to address where the major risks are in our eyes and, uh, and focus our audit efforts there. But part of that process of identifying those risks is to uh, ask members of the governing body uh, to give us some input if they have any specific concerns. And so that's really part of the reason that I'm here. And uh, so I'd like to hear if there are specific concerns that you have, I'd like to hear me either today or in a phone call at a later time or an email uh, uh, so that we can so that we can make sure that we appropriately address those as, as part of the audit. We're concerned about any specific um, concerns that you have with regard to specific fraud uh, possibilities, of course. Um, any non-compliance issues with regard to uh, the federal financial assistance that the city receives in the form of grants from the federal government some, and some from the state. Uh, part of our testing, of course, and one of the risk areas that we see is, you know, is the city in compliance substantially with, with all of those grant agreements? And so we look at that and test that. Uh, but if there are specific concerns, we want to make sure that we address those. The timing uh, for the work is actually we're starting next week with our pre-audit uh, work and uh, plan to be on, on site uh, for a week or so. And then the year-end audit work will begin about January 30th and uh, be on site till about February 10th. Complete that work and, and deliver an audit report at the end of March or uh, first part of April, sort of the timing that we're looking at. And so, you know, so this is the beginning of the process. It's not really a report, but it's a, it's a request to, to keep uh, communications open. And uh, certainly would like to, to hear any concerns that you have. Uh, Councilor Intiman. Dean, I just have a question. Over the years that you guys have been doing this, have, has there been anything being relatively new here, has there been anything that has really stuck out that we need that we should be, be pay, uh, paying closer attention to, or or that we should be be made aware of? You know, I I, I think that we found that overall the city has pretty good internal controls, and, and internal audit plays a big part in that. Um, you know, I I think that there's been specific grants where we we found some minor non-compliance issues. But I can't recall of anything that was very significant at this point. Okay, thank you. Anybody have anything at the top of their head that they think we could pass on to Dean? Uh, uh, I don't have anything, but if we, if we want, we could always send it to Rich 
or to me, and I'll send it to Rich. But if you have an idea later, I think if we could get it through Rich, essentially, so Rich could get it to Dean. Then I can call or email or Dean. Somehow, or somehow yeah. uh, facilitate that. But yeah. yeah, I can't think of anything either, Dean, but um, okay. it's kind of interesting that the council approves the plan for the audit committee, and we look at a lot of cash handling things, and then I suppose if the audit committee recommended something to you, it would all have to do with money and where the money is where the most money is and those kinds of issues, but I can't think of any particular. <coughs> All right. Uh, I have a question for the committee, and, and as we schedule our meetings for next year, um, last year I think we had Dean or, or one of the partners um, talk to us at the January meeting. Would you want us to schedule Dean or somebody from I Bailey to talk in January, or oh. can we just wait till March when the audit work is is substantially completed there. I got a question before we answer that. I think we last year dealt with a, a late invoice or an odd invoice or something. Uh, Had to do with the billing, I think. Would yeah. that? Yeah. Would we get charged for an extra visit, or is it all part no. of the plan? No, <laughs> that's no. <All> right. <laughs> no, that's part of that's part of the audit. All right. Okay. So, if does the committee desire a partner for my Bailey at our January meeting, or are we comfortable waiting until March? I guess is the question. So. I, I would suggest we wait until they're completed. I can't think of a reason to have them appear in January. Unless you find something uh, that you think you should be. I, I think that would be okay. appropriate unless there's, you know, something that comes up in the meantime. And I'll, and I'll also be in touch with you directly by phone as chair of the audit committee because we were required to have direct okay. contact. Uh, in case you know in case there's something that comes up that you don't want to sure you know talk about publicly that we gotcha. need to address fair enough anything else all right Dean anything That's else all right thank you for coming Appreciate okay thank it. you we'll move on now to the uh, update on the fraud policy Rich. yeah um, I, I drafted a fraud policy uh, kind of a first first uh, uh, first run at it, and I met with uh, Bill O'Toole, the HR director, and with the city attorney, David Fifley. Uh, we discussed it uh, briefly, and before we went much further, we decided we would go back to the fiscal committee and just ask them what form they would want to see this fraud policy once it gets developed, whether that would be a resolution adopted by the council or an ordinance or uh, how they want it to proceed and, and the instructions from fiscal were to uh, have that in the form of an ordinance, which is a little higher level of authority. Uh, but they also asked that, uh, you know, that the audit committee be aware of the, the policy. I am planning to meet tomorrow afternoon with, um, with the city attorney with the HR director. We'll discuss the policy some more. So if you'd like to see the first draft, I can give that to you if you want to read it and just give me some input. Or, or uh, as we before we show it to the fiscal committee, if I have copies, if I'd you'd like, like to see it. okay, I'll just if it, if at the, the end of the meeting I can just hand them out. And oh, you have copies. I have copies for everybody if, if they want to look at them. And then uh, the fiscal committee would be meeting uh, December fifth. That's the first Monday of the the month they meet. Um, so uh, I don't anticipate the council will see this for a while. I think it. We'll kind of work it through the committee level, and then at some point, when we kind of have a polished product, then we'll and everybody's sort of on the, the same page, and we'll present that to the uh, city council at some point. So, I'll hand out those copies for you, so you can give us some input. So, okay, very good. We'll get a copy of that after the meeting. Uh, we'll move on to then the 2012 audit plan, annual audit plan. Good. Yeah, the uh, for the for the new members. Um, Usually around the, this time of year in the fall, I, I get input from city council members and from directors, and based upon a risk assessment, we come up with kind of a tentative list of projects and audits for the following year. Um, and once it gets uh, uh, reviewed by this committee, it gets passed along to the full city council, and they would adopt this by resolution. And then that's sort of our marching orders for the year, and we, we proceed with our with our projects. Um, I did have, um, I believe I had seven requests actually from directors this year. And we were able to incorporate all those seven requests into the plan. Two of them were things I was already thinking about. 
Um, and I met with uh, Tracy Turbeck, the finance director, a few weeks ago. And we talked about some of these uh, some of these projects. So uh, a lot of this is coming from management, which I think is good. They they see the value in this. They believe that they are um, uh, getting value out of these audits. And I think we have a good working relationship with our director, so we're we're pleased with that. So um, look at page two there. Um, under operational audits, uh, we have the Siouxland libraries. We haven't we haven't done the libraries before, in our in the, fa in the past five years, other than a few uh, specific things like the uh, cash handling and, and the donated property. But we haven't done an operational audit, so we we put that on the plan. Um, and they also have a what they call a library memorial fund. It's a, it's a, a special fund. It's called 482. We would look at that as well. That's um, uh, th money that's been donated in in memory of somebody for a specific purpose. So we'd look at to see uh, that that money was uh, was uh, properly handled. Um, and uh, that Siouxland Libraries is, is sort of a, a joint city-county uh, operation now. It's not just the city libraries, but it incorporates some of the, the, the tiny county libraries we have in, in our uh, some of the, the uh, towns in Minnehaha County. Uh, so it's not just, uh, not just the Sioux Falls Library. So. Um, in the bottom of page two there, we, we had a request to audit the, uh, the, the contract the landfill has with POET. Uh, they purchased the gas from the landfill and they use that to, to, uh, as a fuel source uh, for production of ethanol. Um, that brings in quite a bit of revenue for the, for the landfill, which is an enterprise fund. It brings in approximately 20% uh, of the budget to the landfill revenue, so it's, it's kind of a big contract. Uh, so we have that on the, uh, on the schedule for next year. Page three, um, under the revenue, cash handling, cash receipts, we try to do at least one of these every year. Um, we um, have been thinking of doing the utility billing office and public works had also talked to us about that. Um, so we are going to uh, be looking at that. They've uh, recently converted to a new uh, utility billing system. Um, their procedures have changed, so it would be just a way of uh, uh, to seeing that the internal controls are strong and that uh, the policies are being followed. So we, we have that in our plan. Uh, special area audits in the middle of page three there. Um, a request from Public Works to look at the, uh, the light and power street light repair program that is transitioning this year, the, the way that's funded. Uh, so we were asked to look at that. So we put that in our plan. Um, as far as water, we, we had planned this already. We were going to look at um, uh, the status of recommendations from our 2008 audit. Uh, we we're also going to look at some of the, uh, the financial conditions of the, the Water Enterprise Fund. Um, uh, Public Works had requested that we look at uh, specifically at the inventory. They have all more than $1 million in inventory for the repair and maintenance items. Uh, looking at the internal controls over that, um, that that's a very large parts and materials inventory they maintain at the water plant. So we'll, we put that in our plan. Um, city fees is something that uh, we feel is important. Um, in previous audits, we've looked at, um, when, we've, when we've done audits of departments, oftentimes we'll find out there's a, a fee out there that hasn't been looked at in 10 or 20 years, uh, has not been adjusted. Uh, GFOA, the Government Finance Officers Association, has a list of best practices about how often you should review fees. Um, you know, setting up a policy on what what is that fee supposed to cover? Is it supposed to cover 50% of the cost or 10% of the cost? So we may come up with some recommendations down the road for the city council on uh, uh, if we if you know uh, a fee setting a, a city fee setting policy. So we we put that in the plan. Um, the overtime that was a request from management to, to look at um, uh, the proper procedures for approving and recording overtime, specifically in fire rescue, but we'll also include uh, some of the other departments that, that generate um, significant overtime just to make sure that uh, that process is running the way it should be. Uh, the bottom of page three, that was a request from our, our, the health director to look at the Ryan White Title III grant. Um, they're scheduled to receive 390000 next year for, um, for that grant. That is uh, specifically to provide care services for people with HIV and AIDS. Uh, so we put that on our plan. Uh, top of page four, quality of life bonds and the River Greenway. There is interest from the council um, in this. Uh, we'll look at the two quality of life bonds to make sure that the, uh, uh, the expenditures made with those bond proceeds were, were appropriate. And the River Greenway project, um, 
there, there was a comprehensive plan that's been drafted. Uh, we'll look at uh, the progress on that plan, uh, looking at phase one and phase two of that project to see that the, uh, the expenditures were appropriate. Middle of page four, purchasing procurement. I uh, spoke with the, uh, the finance director, and, and he had uh, made mention of this. Uh, we've looked at this before. Um, we'll look at this again to see what the status of recommendations is, uh, examine the internal control systems over the city's purchasing and procurement of supplies, materials, and services. Fraud risk assessment, that was our very first project as an audit shop in 2007, and so that was um, going on the sixth year now. It's time to do that again. Um, that'll be an assessment. Uh, we'll be working closely with management to identify potential fraud scenarios, controls that would prevent or detect them, uh, looking at fraud vulnerabilities, uh, ranking those, and then presenting a report to the audit committee about that. So. And then uh, lastly, the event center, I, when I spoke with Tracy Turbach, he, he, you know, he mentioned uh, uh, doing some auditing of that pending you know, the, uh, the voters' approval of that project, which happened, and uh, now we have a, an event center costing $115 million, so we'll probably start looking at um, internal controls over that, and that would continue on to 2014 as, as, as it's a multi-year project. So. Um, as always, technical assistance to committees and council members and departments. Um, Top of page five, it, it becomes a little more complicated in 2012 as we start rolling out the new uh, financial reporting software package that the city will be purchasing, uh, trying to work with departments on, on, um, on implementation, plus training our own staff as we, Tim and I, have to learn the new software like everybody else, and we have a third auditor coming, and they'll have to learn the, uh, the software as well. So that'll be, uh, that'll be a, a significant amount of our time. Um, as always, we try to be flexible for special projects, uh, quick response audits. Uh, we have the procedure where the requests come through this committee before we, uh, before we do that. Uh, we have the fraud hotline, um, and we do the follow-up on the status of audit recommendations. Um, we have the routine audit work on page five and six. As you can see the, you know, the contract monitoring and, uh, and that sort of thing. So. Um, and then the very last thing, continuing professional education. We have to maintain so many hours a year of continuing professional education. <laughs> it's a, I would say it's a pretty ambitious schedule. Um, yeah, it's, we're going to be busy. Any questions or comments about that uh, list or audit plan? If, if the audit committee, uh, if the audit committee accepts these, uh, I think the idea is to move these on to the council. Yes. And they'll they would adopt it by resolution. The, the full council has to adopt it by resolution. So, so we're just asking for your approval, endorsement, or whatever. It is. And if there were other items that you wanted to add, if the audit committee felt like there was something else we wanted to add, we could still do that or negotiate that. Yeah, it'd be something to negotiate. Maybe we might have to drop something. It's, but it's certainly, yeah. we want to be. Um, we want to be responsive to the needs of the city council. So, Rich, do you feel that completing all of these audits is contingent upon getting another auditor in place? Yeah, in absolutely. Yeah, if we, if we didn't have the third auditor filled, then uh, we'd really have to take off a lot of these projects because uh, there's only yeah. so many projects, you know, per auditor you can do a year. So, exactly. Okay. You know, that'd be a significant loss in, in uh, personnel if we didn't have that third auditor. So. Any questions or concerns about this plan? Councilor Antman. Just one thing, Rich. On the uh, contract agreement monitoring, one, one uh, you say here you've got new protocol, and one of the questions that came up time and time again was the compliance. And it wasn't uh, on purpose, but we saw where things fell through the cracks, such yes. as additional insureds. Uh, a number of small things that could end up being big things. Yes. Are you going to pay attention to those during yeah, that Yeah, we plan to. We plan to. And then also working with the administration, they, they've, they've changed some things. They have some checklists, and we want okay. to see if that's working. Checklist development. Yeah. You, and yeah, you'll, we, you'll explain that to us, too, how yeah. that's handled. Yeah. So it's kind of an evolving process. You know, I think um, hopefully some of the, the gaps that we witnessed, maybe we can kind of tighten things up a little bit, hopefully, and, and uh, have better monitoring of contracts. Okay. Thank so. you. And Rich, there is still room if the uh, counselors decide by themselves to have something looked at. There's still a little room to get. Something yeah, a little. Out. There's a little wiggle room there. Um, 
course, when you do an audit, you never know how much time it's going to take. You kind of estimate, well, I think this will take so long, and then, but sometimes you get into something and it's like, oh my gosh, I thought this would take about three weeks, and it turns out it takes, you know, six weeks, and then uh, we would come back to the committee and say, you know, we're going to have to carry forward this project into next year, or, or we, have, we ask permission to drop this project off the plan. So we, we'd come back to you for that. So, okay, Councilor Anton. Greg, just a, just a question, uh, Councilor. The uh, if uh, one of us on the council decides that we'd like to have a uh, a look at something, does that go through the chair? Then are you made aware mm -hmm. of that, Greg? So that so that we're made aware of that. I, I guess I'd like to be informed if there's been an additional request or something as as a member of the committee. I don't know if that's appropriate or not. I'm just asking. I I think in the past we've uh, gone through the chair of the council who has um, made it clear that so the whole council knows and through an informational or somehow uh, once we change this they're aware that there's been a request. I think there's probably, if the council wants it done, it's going to be hard to say no. Right. And, and uh, so I think. And doesn't that usually then, it takes a vote of the council then if it's outside of the resolution? Yeah, oh. if, if when you adopt this by resolution, I think you could make a motion to amend. or something. We haven't to done amend. that, but you could make a motion to delete and add one, or just add one. Um, Do you have a date that you're going to bring this forward? I'll have to work with the clerk's office to, for scheduling. But normally, we do it either in January or the first meeting in January, or sometime in December. We we schedule it at a regular seven o'clock meeting for 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 um, the resolution. We'll, we'll try to make sure we bring that up, Councilor Entman, at the uh, when mm -hmm. when the plan is presented to the rest of the councilors, and we'll find a way to get it uh, worked out. So if if a couple of councilors feel like there's a need for something, and they get consensus from the group, that we can surely fit it in. That's one of the goals. We want to make sure that the audit committee. Definitely. Yeah, I was just curious what the protocol was. Yeah, and like I can't remember. I know we had one last year with Councilor Anderson. Yeah, that that was um that was a what we call a special request. It was during the year, um, and normally the protocol for that is that um, they present a written request to the audit committee, and then the audit committee makes a decision whether to add it or put it on next year's plan or not do it at all. So that's usually the audit committee is is delegated to. That seems like we yeah. seems like we haven't we haven't always gone. All the way up to council and get a vote there it's come to this committee yeah for the special request uh, our protocol has been just go through the audit committee i mean they, they the the full council adopts the plan but then the audit committee has some flexibility during the year right to uh, adopt a special request and and in the past uh, there's been cases where they've denied it they've told the person that they should ask the administration um other cases they've uh, they've approved the special request so councilor Aguilar. is should there be a process I know that you're going to be looking at your charter. I mean, uh, is yes. that something that we should further define in there if it's not there already? How we handle special requests, whether it is yeah, done. we could we could put that in the internal audit charter too, and not just and that would probably be a good place to put it. And then yeah. I'll note that for our meeting. Okay, as, just as far as the non-council members, we have what's called the internal audit charter, which is about a three or four page document, which is the kind of our marching orders um, that was adopted back in actually in 2006 when we first started the internal audit function. So that has not been changed or looked at um, in about five years. So that's what we're talking about. You know, if, if next year, if we start looking at the internal audit charter, not the city charter, the internal audit charter, then that might be a time to say, should we put the procedure in there for uh, special request audits? Any questions with that? Okay. We uh, do need a motion to accept the uh, recommended 2012 audit plan. So moved, Aguilar. Second Entman. We have a motion made and seconded to accept the recommended 2012 audit plan and move on to the full council uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Thank you, Rich. Now we'll get an update from Rich on the update on filling the vacant internal auditor position. Okay. At the, um, at the council working session last week, I got to go ahead to advertise to fill the position that was vacated by Jeff Weber, uh, his retirement uh, last month. 
I met with HR um, a few days ago, and we talked about the process. Um, the plan is to post the job on the city website and in the Argus Leader on Sunday, um, uh, the Sunday coming up here on the 27th. Um, it'll be open for two weeks. It'll close on December 9th. Uh, we also notify the, um, the local chapter of the Institute of Internal Auditors. That's uh, the group that we meet with. Um, they have monthly meetings here. It's, it's a group of, uh, there's approximately 110 members um, in eastern South Dakota and kind of southwest Minnesota that are kind of on the email distribution list. So we'd be able to send an email to that group saying, um, if you're interested, you know, check the, uh, check the city website. Um, we're also members of the Association of Local Government Auditors. They have a website where they post um, auditor jobs for their members. So we could also, uh, I think, get some very uh, low cost or free advertising um, on that website. Uh, so it'll be on the city website on Sunday, two weeks. Um, the question I have from HR is um, the last time we did this back in 2008 when, we, when I hired Jeff is um, I had an um, authorization from the audit committee that I would be the hiring authority. And what we did is we just had an email from the chair to me and then I just passed that along to HR saying that Rich Oaksell is the appointing authority to hire. Um, so if that is the wish of the committee, then we could just get an email from the chair to me, and then I could give that to HR. Um, and then the, all, the other question from HR was, uh, who wants to be on, in on the interviews? Last time it was just myself and Jane Hannestad from HR. We interviewed the, the finalists, and then I made the decision. However, um, if you'd like, if, if somebody from the committee, if you want a third person on that, if you want, say, Sue Roust on that, um, that's fine, but last time it was uh, Jane and, and myself that did it. Um, so I guess that's the question for the committee if what you're comfortable with. So. Any comments or wishes that you'd like to have different than Councilor Olfin? My question, Rich, is uh, how comfortable are you? Did that, that seem to work pretty yeah, well? Yeah, it worked really well with Jane and I, and I, you know, we were pretty much in agreement on who the top two candidates were, and uh, I, think it, I think it worked very well. So. I would, I'd be very comfortable doing that again if the committee is, is comfortable with that. So, I like the idea myself. I'm not... Uh, you don't want to be part of it? I'm, I'm okay not being a part of it, yes. <laughs> and I think Rich would do a fine job. And with help from HR, we could get that done. And, and uh, it, it, it's a good job. Okay. And as well, if, if we know anybody or recommending this job to somebody, how would we best describe the position or where would we send them? To I would send them to the uh, SiouxFalls.org and look under the employment section. Okay. It'll get posted there and there should be a, a, a link there to the, the full job description so they can okay, And find the out about Argus it. posting is this Sunday? This or Sunday. Next? This, this Sunday. Sunday and it'll be uh, for two weeks. So December 9th will be the closing. So uh, as far as the timeline of actually hiring somebody, it's going to probably be the end of January before you would get through an interview process and uh, making an offer and that person giving two weeks notice. So um, it, it takes, takes some time there. So, Okay, I think we're pretty good on that then, Rich. If, uh, if we could, we'll move on to our open discussion. Anybody have anything they'd like to cover? I, I would cover one item or two, maybe the, uh, the thought was, <clears throat> I'm trying to get a better grip of when the audit committee and the or Rich presents these plans or reports to the council, it's hard to discern sometimes where the council should act and maybe shouldn't act. At least it has been for me and, and you know, you think there's a place for improvement. Management says, well, they're going to take care of this. We really don't know if they've followed through and have done that. Um, just trying to figure out a better way to maybe either wrap up a year or wrap up a, uh, the end of your reports, Rich, to say somehow uh, audit committee or audit, uh, the auditor feels that these three items are priorities or these three or this one. Uh, you know, I get, I've been through a lot of these reports and I'm just at the end I'm thinking, well, management is going to take care of the problem and it's going to go away, but we don't know that they've done that till could be some months later or a year later or something. And so I'm just looking for a little better summary or a wrap up for myself. Maybe 
Maybe I'm just missing it, but Councillor Entman. Well, um, I think there has been one or two cases where management hasn't necessarily agreed with right. uh, with uh, what your recommendations were. However, I guess at that point in time, we just kind of agreed to disagree um, because they felt that their process was adequate or sufficient, mm -hmm. and they felt comfortable with it. Um, you know, I you know I agree with you, Greg. I, I Councillor, I, I think that. Uh, Maybe at some point in time where we do it, say, a quarter, maybe we do it, say, the end of March or something like that after the year has been completed. Just to, and, and maybe it might be a simple checklist where your recommendations where you can just contact them to see what's been followed through and just give us kind of a report down the line as far as what we've done for the year as, far, mm -hmm. as per our recommendations mm -hmm. and see what the status was. I, I don't have a problem with that. And, and maybe there's, uh, maybe at that point in time, we can have a response from the specific department. You know, our recommendations were this. Uh, you didn't, they have not been um, looked at. Uh, can you tell us why? Like a follow up to the audits that. Uh, exactly. Yeah, because there are times where management disagrees and some points are contentious. And uh, the council, I think, sometimes struggles to uh, figure out, well, how should they change policy to correct it? And who should they believe and, and how to proceed? Or if they have a good explanation at yeah. that point in time why it hasn't been done. And maybe it's just a simple out of sight, out of mind thing, too, where, you know, once you've got the report done, Rich, you know, we've accepted it. It's been passed on to council. We've approved it. You know, we believe that something's being done and it doesn't, it slips through, exactly. you know, not intentionally, but stuff happens. Yeah. Yeah. Councilor Especially in this situation where he may not get around, this audit committee might not get around, or audit might not get around to it again for five years. Right. And uh, now we don't have insurance uh, being placed in force for five more years. Uh, those are the kind of things that really need to be, uh, need to be looked at. Now, my question then is, do you have the time to follow up that way? Well, a lot of times when we do the follow-up, we're relying upon the assertions of management, you know, like an email or a phone call, have you right. taken care of this? Yeah, it's, it's fine. And, and you really don't know for sure until they actually go in there and do, the, do another audit, you know, two years later, three years later, five years later. Um, you're really depending upon them to say, yeah, we took care of that. Okay, I'll, I'll put down that you took care of that. Or maybe a little bit more specific than that, if, if you might. Maybe you can say, okay, great, you said you've taken care of it. Tell me what steps you've implemented. I need to report back to the, yeah. to so, the Sometimes you can tell. I mean, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll come to me and say, here, we drafted the new policy. Here it is. Or I can look on the website. Some of the things are very easy to check. Others, you know, unless you're getting out there doing an audit, you really don't know. But, yeah, you're right. I think a report like yeah. that would be beneficial yeah. for yeah. us. So maybe what we could start with just even – even this year is a uh, summary of all the re a summary sheet of all the reports of which which items we did and what findings were most important to the audit auditors mm -hmm. and some validation or checklist that we've gone through that we've actually reviewed them at the end of the year or if you say maybe at the end of the first quarter following the year so there's been time for management to implement them kind of like a brief executive summary if that's possible yes. yeah we can do we can do a brief summary you guys do you guys yeah. like that i think yeah. i think it would really be beneficial for the council members yeah because sometimes we struggle on where we should act yeah. and where we shouldn't and uh, that i think that'd be a great great tool for us okay well that's really all i had for open discussion um and the other thing is last year tamara started um asking if we could, you know, just set up the schedule a year in advance, and that worked well, I think, this year, where we just said, you know, we're going to do a committee meeting every two months, and then we'll just put the dates out there. So if it's all right with the committee, maybe in December, we'll just send an email out with some tentative dates yeah. and just ask, you know, if, uh, feedback, I guess. If we don't hear back from you, then that's kind of going to be the schedule. Um, now, uh, we'll probably have to try to make them on a Thursday because there was discussion yesterday of moving the city council meetings from Monday to Tuesday. So I would assume that would mean we wouldn't want to do an audit committee meeting on a Tuesday, if, if, if I understand. Good that assumption. Correctly. So um, so maybe we would look at, well, we, I suppose we could do it on a Monday or a Thursday, but <laughs> I, I guess I'd prefer Thursday. but. Um, so we'll, Tamara and I, will, we'll send something out to the committee members in December with a, a tentative list of audit committing dates so we can, so you can put that on your schedule then. Okay, very good.
Great, thank you. Uh, all right, we do have a request to go into an executive session. If I could get a motion to do that and read the, uh, as per the agenda, if somebody could do that. Make the motion that we move into uh, executive session to discuss a personnel matter pursuant to SDCL 125.2. One. Second, Aguilar. Very good. We have a uh, motion and second to go into executive session. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, we've gone into 